Welcome to Strategy Saturday. I'm Charles Crillo, and today we're going to be discussing what is an estoppel in real estate. Have you always wanted to invest in real estate, but didn't have the time, didn't know where to find the deals, couldn't get the funding, and didn't want tenants calling you? Since 2006, I've been buying income-producing properties in great locations that provide us with consistent passive income while we wait for appreciation in the future and take advantage of tax laws while we're waiting. And unlike your financial advisor, we invest alongside our investors in every property we purchase. Check out investwithharborside.com. If you like the idea of investing in real estate, if you like the idea of passive income, partner with us at investwithharborside.com. That's investwithharborside.com. There are two types of estoppels that are regularly involved with real estate transactions, a tenant estoppel and an association estoppel. A tenant estoppel certifies the current state of the lease terms for a third party. Typically, the certificate requires the tenant to verify the rental amount, if the tenant is current on the rent, or does the tenant have any potential claims against the landlord. The certificate is commonly utilized when a property owner is selling the building or they are looking to refinance their mortgage. An association estoppel is provided by a homeowner's association, an HOA, and it clearly spells out the particulars about the property you are looking to purchase and the HOA that the property resides in. Information on the homeowner's association will include governing documents, membership requirements, if there are any special assessments or liens on the property you are trying to purchase. An association estoppel will confirm or deny that the subject property complies with the HOA's regulations and rules. And to obtain the estoppel, buyers must contact the homeowners association directly. So breaking down the tenant estoppel. Well, the tenant estoppel is a due diligence item signed by the tenant, and it verifies the terms and conditions of the tenant's lease. It is common with apartment buildings and commercial properties. Now, the tenant estoppel verifies what the seller is telling the buyer is true, and a lender may request a tenant estoppel to confirm that a tenant is meeting their obligations of the lease. Some examples of when tenant estoppel becomes helpful is if a landlord has discounted a tenant's lease for six months because of, say, a roof leak, but fails to tell the new buyer and just provides the original lease during the due diligence process. The tenant estoppel confirms the new temporary lease terms. So what is included in a tenant estoppel? Well, requirements may vary, but the main points contained in a tenant estoppel are the start date of the lease, the date to which rent has been paid, a verification that there are no defaults or judgments by the landlord or tenant, or if there are defaults, a statement of the defaults, a verification that the lease has not been modified, or a list of the lease modifications. Tenant estoppels are not required in every commercial real estate transaction, but they are recommended. So I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, submit comments and potential show topics at globalinvestorspodcast.com. Look forward to two more episodes next week. See you then. Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars, LLC, exclusively.